Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Rotonda Tomoli, self-proclaimed Mokororo Wavenda. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope that you enjoy this video and let's get right into it. So obviously before I get started, I just want to set out a disclaimer that I mean no disrespect to anybody that I talk about in this video. My video is purely for entertainment and educational purposes only. So today I want to tell you guys about a man by the name of Frederick Stephen West. Fred was born on the 29th of September in 1941. He was born in a rural village in the UK called Munch Markle. So this village was very off, like far off from like the city and all the city life and like commercial living and stuff like that. It was very, very rural, you know, like literally grass everywhere, really green, uh, farming, like that was pretty much the main jobs there it was like a farmer, a herder, stuff like that. That was the vibe. So Fred was the second of six siblings. He was born with curly blonde hair and blue eyes. Fred's father was known to be pretty abusive, actually. He was known to be abusive of all of his children. And he didn't have any remorse to this or any problem with it. He thought it was okay and normal. And his mother, his relationship with his mother was a bit more than just son and mother or mother protecting her son. It is said that Fred's mother was actually assaulting him from a very young age. It is said that actually in Fred's home life, in their household, that incest was actually normal for them. And it was something that they were pretty much used to growing up for all of his siblings and for his parents. Fred actually didn't finish school. He stopped going to school when he was 14 years old. He was known to not have a very high IQ or really intelligent, but he was able to work with his hands and he knew how to get by, you know, like he knew how to survive without school pretty much, probably because of how he was raised. He was raised in the farm. You don't really need school to farm. So after leaving school, Fred was actually known a lot for chasing girls in the village. Because of how he was raised, he felt that all these desires and intentions pretty much were normal to him and he thought that everyone pretty much lived this way. So he would chase after girls all the time and he was actually known to be pretty good looking. So he was quite the charmer actually. And he was also known for a lot of petty crimes. He was, you know, always caught for theft and all these tiny little crimes. So like a lot of young guys around his age, 14, 15, 16, he started to become really fascinated in motorcycles. This is when he actually got his own motorcycle and it became like his pride and joy. He was always on it. He was known for always riding around, which changed on November 28th of 1958. Fred was riding his motorcycle down a road and then he collided with a young woman who was coming in the opposite direction. It was a huge car accident. There's not a lot of information about it. All that's really known is that it took him a really long time to recover and he was actually in hospital unconscious for seven days. So another thing is that he inherited a lot of brain abnormalities and, you know, different emotional abnormalities from his parents who also had their own brain issues. Things for him only got worse after this car accident. He suffered multiple injuries, including a broken nose and some other abnormalities it's not really stated like what exactly on his face and a broken leg which caused one of his legs to be shortened so he started walking with a limp the accident actually led to him having brain injuries that damaged his frontal lobe and this changed him completely he started being known for having erratic mood swings and like i said that he used to be a pretty good looking child and growing up obviously he was still pretty good looking 
but after this accident because there was damage to his face he was no longer as traditionally handsome because of his injuries and he's now changed nose this including with the damage to his brain actually made him act out and this is when he started becoming more aggressive as a person and he would instead of now trying to charm girls and talk sweet nothings in their ear he would now forcefully take what he wanted from them and he was actually known to do this to a lot of different girls in the village in the area he would forcefully assault them and he was known to be a groper and he thought that this was okay and it was normal and he thought that there was nothing wrong with what he was doing around this time is when he met his first wife Catherine Costello so Catherine Costello at the time was actually 16 years old and she was a street worker she actually moved from her hometown Glasgow to where Fred was at the time and Fred didn't actually really see her as like a soulmate or the love of his life he saw her more like a replacement for his mother from everything that he had been doing all this time she was very different from the girls that he had been interacting with while he was assaulting and groping and harming she was able to control him she was able to stand her ground and he found this refreshing i guess because he saw a lot of his own mother in her and that was pretty much why he chose her and he did marry her indeed and he actually married her when she was already five months pregnant with someone else's child so soon after they got married catherine actually gave birth to charmaine west in 1963 and she was soon followed by her little sister and marie so their childhood was not really like conventional like most childhoods i guess their relationship was very toxic per se like it was a lot of on and off you know one minute they're living together the next minute they're not and their children their two daughters were actually moved up and down like one minute they're in foster care then they're with their mother then they're back in foster care then they're with their father and when they were living with their father it was said that he would hire a lot of different women to just take care of them he wasn't really like the involved parent he was just there so finally in the year of 1965 Catherine was tired of this up and down relationship that she was having with Fred and she finally decided that she was leaving him for good and she was moving back to her hometown of Glasgow. Fred didn't seem to really have a problem with this or really care much about it but he did not want his children to leave so he said that his children had to stay with him. At this time, he had already hired a young woman by the name of Anne McFall, who was 16 years old at the time. And it is said that Fred actually considered her the love of his life. So after Catherine leaving, Anne McFall actually moved in with Fred and his daughters to take care of them. But since then, they started a more physical relationship. And this was when she actually became pregnant for Fred. And during this time, Fred actually decided and he started to see her as a problem and not as his partner anymore. He started to feel like she became a problem. And because Fred was very different from us and how we thought, he saw people as disposable and instruments for his own use whatever he needed so then he decided that he didn't want her around anymore and this was when he ended her life she was last seen in july of 1967 and she was actually fred west's first victim so even though she was his first victim she was actually the last body to be discovered but she began the spiral and pretty much him becoming comfortable with the fact that if he finds a problem with a person in his life then he can just dispose of them 
pretty much and bury them and when she was finally discovered she was actually discovered with the skeletal remains of her unborn baby not long after this is actually when uh, Fred met Rose Mary so Rose was actually born in, in November of 1953 her mother was known to have severe depression and her father was schizophrenic and also extremely abusive. This is actually kind of what connected her and Fred a lot, like their commonness in their upbringing. Because Rose was actually also assaulted by her father all her life since she was young. And actually he was assaulting her even after she started her relationship with Fred even after she had already had four children for Fred, he would still come to their home and assault her. So Fred actually saw a soulmate in Rose. So like I said, they really got along pretty well because of the fact that they had such similar upbringings and they saw a lot of themselves in each other so not long after they met actually their relationship moved pretty quickly and by the time she was only 17 at the time but never mind their age gap she actually moved in with Fred and his two children and not long after moving in with Fred and his two children she was pregnant and shortly after that, in October of 1970, she gave birth to their daughter, Heather. Motherhood actually didn't come very easy for Rose. She wasn't, um, she wasn't as intellectually developed as most people. She was known to have a bit of a brain issue. So she did like children, but she didn't like children the way that most adults like children. She saw children more as like dolls to play with. She didn't really see herself as a mother. She saw her children more of like her property, where she saw them as like dolls or inanimate objects. She didn't really see them as like her children that needed to be taken care of and nurtured and loved and protected. She ruled all her children with an iron fist. They were never encouraged to make friends. They would pretty much go to school and come back and that's it. She just had these children and then she just ruled them. And sadly, the child that got the most of this was Fred's first child, Charmaine, from his previous marriage. And while Fred was actually serving a nine-month sentence in prison, Charmaine disappeared. And it was found out that Charmaine was actually murdered by Rose. So instead of this destroying her relationship with Fred, it actually solidified it and made it more stronger and changed the boundaries completely of their relationship from that moment on. So obviously because Charmaine had a mother, Catherine came back and she wanted her daughters Obviously, she wanted her daughter Charmaine and she wanted to know where Charmaine was because she had just disappeared out of nowhere. And this was when Fred was actually home now. And this was when Fred and Rose decided that Catherine had to go to protect the secret of what happened to Charmaine. So this was when they actually took Catherine's life as well. And Fred disposed of her body. He actually buried her right next door of Anne McCall's body. So shortly after the disappearance of Catherine, this was when him and Rose actually made their relationship official. They got married and then they moved to a very secluded and close-knit community called Cornwall Street. And this is actually where all of the rest of their crimes actually took place so on november 17th of 1972 a young 17 year old girl by the name of caroline owens was actually coming from her boyfriend's home and was waiting for a lift that she normally gets instead of the regular person who came and gave her a ride this was when fred and rose actually came and they stopped and they offered her a lift so because they were a couple and Rose seemed very 
welcoming she didn't see any problem with this and she thought oh, okay they're a nice couple i'll take a lift so she got into this car and this was when they actually started to talk to her and they asked her if she wanted to be a nanny for the three daughters that they had at home she was pretty excited because she actually always wanted to be a nanny. She really liked children. And she saw being a nanny as like a little escape from her own world to go and see another world a little bit and take care of these children. And then, so she agreed happily. And not long after that, she actually moved into their home to start her duties as a nanny for these children. Very early on in this dynamic, she actually became very, very uncomfortable because this was actually quite an abusive household. She could see that these children showed signs of abuse from their father and physical abuse from their mother. She actually started to feel really uncomfortable living with them and this was when she actually decided that she didn't want to work for them anymore and Fred actually started making very inappropriate propositions to her and this was her last straw and she just left. She took her things and she moved out. Then one day when she was at the same spot where she normally waits for her ride because it was close to her boyfriend's home at the time, she was waiting for her ride obviously and sadly this was when Fred and Rose actually stopped and found her the same place that they found her the first time that they met her. And because she didn't want to seem rude, she decided when they offered her a lift, she said that Rose was apologizing for what happened and she was saying that the children really missed her and they really wanted to see her and they just offered her a lift. They said, can we please just give you a lift just to apologize for the uncomfortableness or whatever you felt when you were living with us so because she didn't want to seem rude she did take the lift she says that the lift was normal until they and they were about to reach her home this was when fred actually started asking her very inappropriate questions about the time that she had with her boyfriend and rose was encouraging this behavior and this was when her and Rose got into a bit of an altercation and Fred stopped the car and he hit her on the head until she passed out. She says that when she came to, they were actually parked in front of their own home and her hands were already tied behind her back and Fred was dragging her out of the car. She says that for the next 12 hours, she was beaten assaulted on end by Fred and Rose. She says that Rose would, they would both do very inappropriate things to her. They were examining her body as if they were doctors and making comments about how certain parts of her body looked. Then they would continue and go and assault her and then abuse her. She says that she was very terrified at this time and she felt like at any moment they would just start like stabbing at her or something. But she decided that she just had to hold on and try to survive this, what was happening. So after this torture had continued, had went on, Fred had assaulted her and then he began to cry and she was confused. And then Fred said to her, uh, if you promise not to say anything to anyone and you promise to come back and be a nanny and work for us again, I promise to let you go. So because she saw this as an opportunity to escape, she decided, okay, she's going to agree. So she agreed and she said, okay, she promises she's going to come back. She's not going to tell anyone what's happened. And they actually let her go. This was a very lucky escape for her. And she went straight to the police after this happened. So the police actually did go and they arrested Fred and Rose. But because this was such a terrifying ordeal for Caroline, she then was not comfortable with giving the police the proof that they needed to be able to actually convict Fred and Rose for their crime. And sadly, they were just given a £25 fine each and let off free to go. And this was pretty much what solidified and they saw that, okay, if we commit our crimes and we just make sure that there's no evidence and there is no one to run to the police, 
then there will be no problems and we will be able to get away with this without any issues. So this was when they decided that there will be no longer any surviving victims of their crimes, that they would have to get rid of every single person that they kidnap and torture. So not long after this, what they were doing actually became an addiction. The fact that they would find girls and kidnap them and take them home and tie them up and torture them and assault them and then get rid of them became an addiction like a drug they started doing this like a reflex like they weren't even trying to be civil about it anymore so as they went on with their crimes they became a bit smarter about it they started to target women who were less likely to be looked for less of a problem at that time so they were now starting to target uh runaways and prostitutes women pretty much that they felt like no one would be looking for them if they disappeared. So when they would find these victims, they would actually take them back to their house and they had a cellar and a ground in their home. So they had like a basement vibe. And this was where they would tie these girls up and they would torture them and they would assault them. And then they would end their lives and then they would bury them in the cellar. So when he had actually filled the cellar with all these bodies of these poor women, he actually cemented the cellar down and he converted the cellar into a bedroom for his children. Like his children are now living in his ex torture dungeon. So these crimes are actually going on for 14 years where they would find a girl and they would do these things and they were getting away with it. You know, they were able to do this, no problems, no one would ever come by looking for anyone. So by June of 1987, Heather, their first daughter, was actually now 16. And she had now endured torture and beatings and abuse from her parents. And she was now becoming a problem, as they call it. They said that she was now becoming a problem. And this is when they decided to get rid of their problems, how they always get rid of their problems. This is when, while the other children were at school, they actually ended Heather's life. It is not known if they also abused her or tortured her like they did their own victims or if they just ended her life. They actually ended her life and buried her in what would later become a patio so for eight years um heather just went unknown of her location she just disappeared according to the community and her parents had no explanation for what happened to heather she was just now missing but then heather's death actually became a sick and dark joke in the household by these parents they would make comments to their other children like hey if you don't behave you'll end up under the patio like Heather. So this is how they discipline their children pretty much by always threatening that they would end up under the patio like their sister Heather. So obviously because these are children, this rumor started to spread through the neighborhood about how they would discipline their children saying that they would end up under the patio like Heather. So eventually this rumor reached the ears of a local female policeman in the area. So obviously she started to wonder like, what exactly does that mean? And then she then went and convinced her superiors to actually go to the West home and dig up this patio and see if when they threaten these children, they actually mean what they're saying. So finally on February 24th of 1994, Early in the morning, the police knocked on the West home. And this was when they probably had a warrant. I don't know. This was when they actually went and they dug up the patio. And not just the patio, they also dug up the backyard of their home. They were expecting to just find the remains of Heather. But they actually found the remains of three girls. And this was the end of Rose and Fred's killing spree. So this was when Fred was arrested and Rose was also arrested. 
and he took it really lightly like he didn't care because this was like he he seemed like unbothered because he was like 54 at this time and he felt like he had already gotten away with all these crimes for pretty much his whole life and he just thought that this was just like procedure and then he was gonna go back home and no one was gonna talk about it again but no he was like this was it yo he even though he was becoming a bit delusional in thinking that oh they're gonna find a few bodies in my house and they're just gonna let me go no he saw that no this is serious like they're gonna they arrested me i'm in trouble like this is bad they're both in trouble. So they continued the search, obviously, of their home. And this was when they actually found six more bodies in their house. So in the cellar, like where we told you that was where their little dungeon was of the horrible crimes. So they found six more bodies there. And in June 30th of 1994, Fred and Rose were actually arrested and jointly charged with nine counts of murder and fred was actually charged with two more murders of his first wife catherine and his daughter shaman so at this time these were the murders that they were charged for were the bodies that they found in their yard and they hadn't found the body of Anne yet. So on the 1st of January in 1995, Fred actually ended his own life by hanging himself in his prison cell before he could be convicted of his murders. Rose was then left alone to now be charged with all the murders now because she's the one that's left. And Rose now, because her husband is gone, she was now just trying to protect herself and stop herself from actually going to... Well, obviously she knew she was going to prison, but like obviously for not as long, she was hoping, I'm guessing. So then she was now charged with 10 counts and she was sentenced to life. And that is the case of Frederick West and Rose Mary. So the first thing I can say is that Fred is a coward. Fred is a coward because he was perfectly fine and perfectly able to torture and hurt these poor women for so many years. But then now that it's time for him to face the music and face his crimes, he decides, no, he's going to end himself. He did not deserve to get off so easily. I wish that he wasn't able to get off like that. And he was actually able to go to prison and serve his time. But he wasn't. So it's a really wild question, like if Fred was actually born to be a killer or if he became a killer, all because of the fact that he had these brain injuries or brain problems that he was inherit that he inherited from his parents and then the accident that he went through that only made the issue worse and pretty much removed the brakes of human emotion pretty much it was like he was no longer human so it is a big question of if all these factors of his life actually made him become a killer or if he was a killer just from the day that he was born and the same question goes to say for his wife rose because she pretty much went through the same things that fred went through and somehow they were able to find each other and somehow they both decided that this is going to be their relationship and they're going to be able to do these things to these people and feel like it's okay but anyway, that is the case. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, turn on your post notifications so you know every time that I post. And if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, I'd like you guys to please comment with an orange heart so that I can comment back with my own little orange hearts. Just so that I can thank you guys for your support. But thank you guys so much. Bye.